In this video, I want to talk about four other elements you can add to your conveyor network for different functionalities. These are the conveyor spur, the transfer table, the turntable, and the turn station. Let's see them one by one. Remember that in our previous model, we had boxes coming through this conveyor and changing the direction instantaneously when they are used by the move to block. So instead of that we want to turn them in here before they go to the move to so let's put a turn station in this position the only thing the turn station does is that it turns the item into the desired position so you can achieve this by achieving the orientation for example front or by giving a particular angle the angle can be defined by number of turns number of radians and number of degrees so we want to turn these 90 degrees so that would mean either 0.5 turns or p and a half radians or 90 degrees this will be equivalent to achieving the orientation front or rear i'm not sure which one of those but in this case since the box is absolutely um, symmetrical it doesn't really matter from an animation standpoint at least you can define the speed of the turn station which is the speed in which the box is moved in the direction of the conveyor and the rotational speed which is how fast it turns either in revolutions per minute radians per second or degree degrees per second so let's keep the defaults here and let's turn it by an angle of 90 degrees so 0.25 turns now when you add the turn station into a conveyor it divides the conveyor in two so we have two conveyors instead of one so you have to be sure that in your convey block you are actually sending this to the right conveyor and here we're not we're using this conveyor as the target but we want to use the other one because this is the target that we really want to achieve and this was the target before we added the turn station so let's see what happens so when the boxes arrive to this point they turn and they continue the trajectory normally. So this is all that the turn station does, nothing else, so all good. Now let's see in action the turntable and the transfer table. The only difference between the two of them is that one maintains the same direction and the other one turns into the previous direction. So let's use the turntable first and let's place it in this conveyor. Then we will need to connect this to a new conveyor that we will create. And the co conveyor is a little bit uh, to the side so we can just change here in the, in the points to zero in order to make it absolutely straight. Now let's check the um, turntable properties and it only has to import the properties, the speed, so the speed it moves in the direction of the conveyor and the rotations which is the speed in which it turns and there's nothing else really so we will need to add a new source to create new boxes here so let's do that fast and we will change this here to 0.5 per second and here as well because right now we just have too many boxes but this will be connected to this convey and of course we will need a queue as well so the interesting thing is that this convey on this side will make the agents go through this through the station but on the other side it won't this is just a destination that it needs to achieve and nothing else but since we start from the current position we will need to add a conveyor enter and this is a good case in which you should use conveyor enter in order to be able to uh, create your network so let's uh, make this initial conveyor and with an offset of agent dot length no width because we're going to continue using the same orientation which is the left and let's add an offset here as well okay now let's see this in action you can see that the ones that are coming from this side are turning while the ones that are coming from the left continue having the same direction so this is what the turntable does now the question is of course which box comes in first normally it's kind of a first in first out situation 
but you can change that because each conveyor has a level of priority. So here you have maximum priority as the default and here as well. So we can change the, this priority to, for example, nine and, and let's see what happens. Since this has priority, all the boxes will come from here and no other box will come from the left side. And you can see this happening in the simulation. These boxes will never come because there are too many boxes coming from the bottom. So let's keep this as it was. Now let's do the same thing in here, but now we're going to use a transfer table. So the transfer table is the same thing, but it just doesn't turn. So for that, we will need a conveyor again, and we will need a new set of block. This will be connected to the conveyor again, to the convey two, but the conveyor enter will be in this one. And we will use a front orientation because since it's not going to rotate, then it will continue moving with the left orientation afterwards, or maybe right orientation. I'm not sure, but since the box is symmetrical, it doesn't matter. So let's make this priority smaller in order for the other conveyor to take all the boxes. Nine will be the same. And let's see this in action. Because there's nothing, uh, there's nothing much to do, like there's a switch, switching delay which is the time it spends in the transfer table before actually moving. And you can use between taking the speed of connected conveyors where it moves towards the direction of the conveyor it comes from or the one that it's going to, or you can choose your own speed for that. Let's add a, a, an offset here. The offset here is zero, but we want to add an offset which is agent.length, get length because this time it's going in the front direction. So we, I, we don't even need to change the orientation really. Now let's see it in action. So the boxes are coming here and then they stay 1.5 seconds there and then they continue. Finally have the conveyor spur. The conveyor spur is generated when you connect one conveyor directly to another one. So for example, like this in diagonal, this spur is uh, immediately generated. We will need to generate boxes here as well. So we will need to copy this again. But the conveyor enter will be uh, this conveyor instead. And this will be connected to convey two as well. In the case of the spur, the agent will continue having the same orientation always. So we need um, to change the orientation here as well to left. And this will be the width. And also let's change the source here. Let's make less boxes because there are too many. There are too many boxes everywhere. So let's change to 0.1 everywhere. And we can see what happens. But with the spur, you have no limitation here. So sometimes it's a good idea to make a stop here to let boxes pass or to do something because otherwise you have boxes crashing with each other. So let's see this in action. So here you see the boxes that are coming here and they maintain the same orientation. This one is blocked now because it can enter, but this is uh, how the spur works. So you, you just get the spur whenever um, a conveyor is connected to another one. But you can end up having a mess here. Let's run it for longer. And you will see that after a while, these boxes are uh, crashing with each other and so on. So it's always a good idea to just put some sort of blocking here, maybe a position on conveyor in order to stop everything. Or maybe you can define certain priorities uh, depending on what you want to do. But here we're going to leave it like this and you can explore on your own. Like here we also have a mess. Uh, it's a good idea as well here to define an offset if you want to avoid boxes being all over each other. Um, but this is part of the difficulty of designing a conveyor network. So just be careful about that and this is it for this video.